Hey, everybody, this is Perch. You, you probably know by now, I, well, you suspect, people say, you know, Perch really hates the multiverse. And it's not entirely true. I don't mind the multiverse. In fact, I, I do like a lot of the stories that came about from that era. Um, Days of Future Past, I like that stuff. I mean, there's, there's plenty of comics that I really enjoy that had alternate futures, different dimensions, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it can be fun. Where, um, where I get frustrated with it is the overuse of it. It's the, uh, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do Spider-Verse 5. And this time, there's another Spider-Verse. And the spider has got th three legs. Cause, and one of them's a dick, but it's big like a leg. And it shoots web fluid out of it. And that's kind of gross because it was originally a dick. But now it's a, a third leg. And it's a we're going to call it Spider-Dick. And that's going to be kind of the joke. And it's going to be funny. And... Um, uh, we're going to make them gender fluid because we're going to do that too. Anyway, I mean, that, that, that's, that's the level of multiversal storytelling we're at. That's, that's what annoys me. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, hey, what if, there was a, uh, what if there was a Green Lantern somewhere in the multiverse? But the Green Lantern's allergic to green. And so he's got to fight crime, but he's always sneezing, and then he needs allergy pills. You know that uh, there's a Rick and Morty bit. Uh, what is it? Cable TV, uh, the interdimensional TV, interdimensional cable TV, something like that. Anyway, they basically, uh, you know, ad lib all these absolutely stupid shows, and it's just kind of it's it's clearly the writers' room is just making shit up, and then they animate it. That's how the multiverse feels right now. If you go back and you read, you know, Crisis on Infinite Earth, so you read some of the Earth Two stuff, or you read. Uh, you know, hell, a lot of Silver Age adventures kind of played around with that concept. I mean, we're at a place where, um, you know, Lois Lane going to a, a, a different multiverse where there's a, a, a somebody who looks like Satan who wants to marry her um, and, and give her devil torns. I mean, that, that somehow is a better, more logical, proper storytelling than whatever the fuck Dan Slott's doing over there at Spider-Man right now. That's like, I... We've got the uh, the Gwiniverse right now. I mean, just like th this is uh, we, l l Marvel in 2023 are publishing comics that include an alternate reality version of Gwen Stacy interacting who died like decades ago, uh, interacting with a bunch of uh, multiversal <laughs> Gwen Stacy's who have become the Sinister Six. That's that you know, comics 2023. That's where we're at. Anyway, uh, this, this viewer writes in, hey, Perch, <laughs> wouldn't it be awesome if I just read a mail that had nothing to do with multiverse? And then I get, then I get somebody in the comments who's like, the video starts at 4 minutes and th th 32 seconds. But then it's a multiverse where uh, the Perch who's reading that comment actually gives a shit. And, and Sorry, there you go. Hey, Perch, so the other day I had one of those nerdy comic book fan thoughts that we all have sometimes which then led to an even nerdier question, and it relates to a topic I've heard you speak about in the past, so I wondered how much you answer this. Here goes. First off, I agree strongly with comments you made in the past regarding too many Spider-Men. No matter how stylish and cool the animated Into the Spider-Verse movie was, and no matter how warm and fuzzy Sp Spider-Man No Way Home felt, I will always prefer a Marvel Universe in which Peter Parker is the only Spider-Man. Okay, fair enough. What, what, the, what the fuck was it with the obsession about MIT? Did MIT pay for part of uh, the funding of No Way Home? Like, that, that film gleefully stroked off MIT for, like, a good third of it. I mean, I, I don't know. I have a brother-in-law who went to MIT. He was like, eh, it's all right. Anyway. But the other day, back to the mail, I ran across some more of the Spider-Verse stuff, and I'm seeing all these different, ridiculous, multiverse versions of Spider-Man. And my immediate reaction was, holy shit, it's like they're trying so hard to be epic that they made it stupid. Which leads to my question. Would you agree that multiverse stories are simply the bad writer way of attempting to do epic storytelling? Because it sure feels that way to me sometimes. And that's Mel. So, I, by the way, I can't, this is me being really, really nerdy. I don't know if um, by epic storytelling... You mean like the epic line of comics, or you mean like truly like like epic storytelling? So, I think both kind of apply. I, I think that look, I think the multiverse stuff is lazy writing. It's basically in effect the writer going, "Hey, what if Spider-Man roll roller skates? That would be funny. I don't know. Let's let's make a story of Spider-Man on roller skates. We'll call them Spider Skates, and that's uh, that's what we'll do. Let's make a story out of it."
And for whatever reason, you know, the fans got kind of excited about this because the idea of kind of fan fiction and some of these different versions of characters has typically been a good seller. Remember, I, I was retailed for many, many years. We'll be again someday. And I, I can tell you that the customers like coming in and like, oh, man, cool, a different version of, you know, of Wolverine and a different, why, this one's evil? I'm, God, I've got to see this. I don't know why, but it's a, it's a trope in comics that survived a long time, and writers could pretty much dip in and go back to it over and over and over again. It's the, uh, the kind of the, the Elseworlds line of Batman, where it's like, this time Batman's a vampire. This time, Batman's Vampire Hunter. This time, you know, Batman's got syphilis. Shit's fallen off of him. So it's, it's amazing. And then he'll become a vampire. Anyway, but that, that, that kind of stuff just worked for a long... There was definitely an audience for it. And I think a lot of the writers are coming in now, you know, and some of the editors more or less remember that there was an audience for it. And they're also stuck in a world where they don't feel like that they could really move things forward. They don't, you know, that we, like, we don't have the budget and the time to do kind of a Claremont-like epic on a, on a comic. We're not even sure what to do with it. It always cracks me up when writers go on Twitter and be like, I've, I've done 20 issues of this run. And I've, had, I've been with editors. I've been drinking with editors where a writer will say, you know, like, I've, I'm really proud of the 36 issues that we're on of an unbroken run. This happened, uh, I was sitting with an editor, and um, Ryan North uh, you know, made a tweet, basically, of like, I'm really proud of this long run. And the editor's like, oh, shit, we're still doing that comic? <laughs> I'm not joking. So anyway, they, they don't know what to do with it. It's fine. I, I do a lot of videos where it really comes across like the editors are terrible. And, and that's not fair. There's, there's several good editors. There's several editors who are just like way overworked. And they're, they're, just, they're busting their ass, for sure. There are also editors who are absolutely phoning it in and, um, you know, asking what the definition of pale is, apparently. So... Regardless of all that, um, the multiverse becomes a nice crutch to this entire system. It basically becomes a way for them to go, "Hey, let's uh, let's tell a let's tell a story that is has that cheap grab of customer attention and doesn't have to have any consequences whatsoever." And you know, it's very easy for us to hire a writer and artist for a couple issues and then do this thing or one issue or whatever, and then uh, you know, never pay that person again because that's how a lot of it goes. It's like, we'll, we'll do, we're going to do this multiverse story, and then, um, you know, we're going to just walk away. <laughs> and, and so it, if, you're, if you're doing everything short term, if you're doing your stories, you're hiring, you know, everybody involved, if it's all very, very, very short term, then this is a great, you know, the, the entire idea of multiverse stories are, are amazing for you. There's no commitment. It doesn't matter if you break the toys. Fuck it. You can do whatever you want. You know, Spider-Man's a giant now. Sure. I mean, why not? It, 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 I mean, fine. And it, it, so it's, it's, be, it's like, um, it's like junk food for comic publishers. It's not healthy for you. It, uh, it has no long lasting kind of value whatsoever. It's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you, you read it and it's disposable and you forget about it seconds later, but you know, it, it does have that draw. I, this is going to be true. People who are comic book fans do like to like, what if? So I, what if the comic was popular, really popular for a long time? Is it like, what if, you know, what if, uh, what if Thor got everyone pregnant? Would they shoot lightning out of their ass? I, what would happen? I don't know. We got to find out. There is that, there is that sense of, of curiosity in comic fans to see how the story would be if it went a different way. It's kind of just to nature and the comic publishers of, pilfered and taken advantage of that but yeah i think i mean there's a lot of kind of epic edge lordy type behavior that goes on with uh with the multiverse and a lot of stories are written that way but probably in my opinion the, the biggest one is just you know not really not be it, it gives you a free pass to not give a shit that's what i think anyway let me know do, am i off base here do you agree disagree let me know in the comments below uh like and subscribe of course as always for some reason, I guess it's good for you. I don't know. Thanks for listening.